Hey, day 36, Satan's yeah. schemes. Yeah. Oh man, Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians that Satan's got schemes. I mean, he's not a creator. He's very crafty. He is a crafty one though, isn't he? He likes to pick us off and do all sorts of things. I think the mm. first thing that uh, he does is he's a liar, isn't he? He's lied right from the beginning. He lied to Adam and Eve, didn't he? Uh, did God really say? He's kind of sneaky in his lies. Yes. And it's the power of lies. Yeah, lies says, so. completely. Completely. Yeah. Lies all the time. Yeah. So that's one of the things to be aware of. Um, I mean, even um, in that line, there's counterfeiting, isn't there? You know, he's, um, uh, he counterfeits the gift of prophecy with tarot mm. cards and horoscopes. Yes. Uh, does counterfeit miracles through uh, things like Reiki and other kind of crystals and spiritual Crystal healing and stuff. Yeah. You know, there's two sources of power, isn't there? There's God and there's the devil. Yeah. And uh, every kind of spiritual power either comes from God or comes from the devil. Yeah. Yeah. And I think people are so interested in the supernatural mm. in our age and people want healing. Um, and they'll chase after healing in any way they can. Mm. Um, and we need to, as Christians, be aware that actually um, we can be pulled into certain things um, whereby it's, you know, whether it's, you know, Reiki or crystal balls or whatever, that has a counterfeit power. Mm. Um, it might seem as though it's powerful, but actually leads you away from God, away from actually trusting yeah. in a message of who Jesus is yeah. and what he offers and actually having um, the, the fullness of healing yeah. and the fullness of care and protection it offers is kind of, it's, it's sidetracked. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking of uh, John 10.10, 10, you know, the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy, whereas yes. I've come that you may have life and life to the full. Yes. And, you know, you may get healed through one of these spiritual things that's coming from the source of power that's the devil, yeah. but ultimately it's going to, you know, destroy you, kill you, to take you away from the goodness of God and the abundant life that he brings. Absolutely. I like this line you have in the book here. It says that the God of this age has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. Mm. And I think that a lot of people are blinded in this age yeah. by a lot of things that, have got, that the devil is actually bringing about in terms of distractions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it might be UFOs, or it might be um, Reiki, or it might be um, it might be some other form of religion that actually yeah. takes you away from looking at Christ and the Gospels, yeah. the true revelation yeah. of who God is. And I think one of the big um, one of the ways that the devil operates, that the Bible shows us, um, is through misquotes in scripture yeah. and directing ourselves from the identity that scripture gives to us and mm -hmm. the purposes that scripture um, tells us that God has brought about for us and mm -hmm. we see this perfectly in Matthew 4 yeah. where Jesus is guided over to the desert by the Holy Spirit yeah. and then the devil comes to tempt him three times and the first he says um, if you are the son yeah. of God not you are the son of God yes. if you are the son of God yeah. Turn the bread, turn the stone, sorry, into bread. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then if you are the son of God, um, jump off this cliff. Who would mm. want to do that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So he wants to derail <laughs> yeah. our purpose, yeah. our assignment. Um, and then what he tempts Jesus with the third time is with the wealth and the nations. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so we need to look um, out for these schemes. We need to be aware that the devil wants to tempt us away from our identity, mm. um, away from our purpose, our assignments mm. that God's given to us, yeah. um, and also um, away from God being our provision. Yeah. So he's going he's gonna to direct us towards money, yeah. or towards fame, yeah. um, or towards power, yeah. um, other than, than God's provision, yeah. God's power. Yeah, and there's that sort of sense of accusation, isn't there, that he, uh, you know, if we've blown it, we've done something wrong, uh, the Holy yeah. Spirit would show us, you know, would convict us that, hey, we've done something that we shouldn't have done and draw us back to, to confessing it and repenting and living in the good of the victory that we have. But the Satan would accuse us like, you're useless, yeah. Mike, you know, you've blown it again and yeah. you're completely, you know, you come under condemnation and I think... You know, if we were if we're under condemnation, it's from the devil. Absolutely. If there's that sense of we've displeased the Lord or a sense of conviction that we've done something wrong, then 
then yeah, that's more the Holy Spirit, isn't it? And he, yes. he, he, he loves to accuse all the time. The Holy Spirit, when he convicts, he comes with gentleness. Absolutely. Whereas the devil comes with pointed finger. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. condemnation. Yeah. And you're no good. Yeah. And he drags us down. So that's the way he operates. And we can decipher between the Holy Spirit and Absolutely. the devil in terms of what fruit is this bearing yeah. in my life. Yeah, yeah. And um, what I love about um, how Paul um, talks about the subject um, in 2 Corinthians 10 is that um, in, in verse 5, he, he mentions that actually the battle mm. um, and the way that the, the enemy works, it's, it's, it's between our ears, mm. it's in our minds. Yeah. Um, and what um, Paul talks about is that we should take captive every thought. Amen. Bring yeah. every thought under captivity mm -hmm. um, to the obedience of Christ. Yeah. So it's thinking about um, what, what is going on in my head. Am I being tempted to lie a little, cheat a little? Mm -hmm. You know, you can get away with that. Yeah. You don't need to tell them that you've taken that amount. Yeah. Um, and all these sneaky ways, we can, we can test it out. Yeah. The, the Bible in, um, in 1 John um, 4, chapter 4, it says, test every spirit. Yeah. So yeah. just we've been talking about um, the different spirits of um, Reiki and crystal balls and crystal stones. And um, we can test every spirit. Yeah. Even the, the thoughts in our mind, we can test them and see, actually, yeah. does this line up? Yeah. with the pattern of scripture yeah. with the encouragement of the Holy Spirit yeah. with the fruits of the Holy Spirit yeah. if it doesn't it's the schemes of the enemy absolutely and part of it is you know lining up the scripture as you say but also the community of faith that our brothers and sisters yeah. together and you know Satan loves to isolate us mm. and uh, either by accusation you know you're no good you don't deserve to be with them yeah. but, but, but on the other side of it is that when we're with brothers and sisters and we're talking about stuff uh, that really helps, doesn't it, in discernment. It um, brings things into the light. And so often, yes. yeah, the Bible says, confess your sins to one another. And I think if you're stuck in a habit uh, and then you confess it to a trusted friend, a trusted Christian friend, it takes the, takes the, um, uh, the sharpness out of it, doesn't it? The, the Satan's yes. accusation, the isolation is completely gone. It's in the open and it, it's gone away. And so, yeah, community is really important. Absolutely. Scripture is really important. Yeah. Uh, Testing the spirits. Yes. Uh, yeah. And you shared earlier about mm. um, temptation. Yeah, and, sure. And um, the scripture that shows us that actually um, there's no temptation that's escaped God. Yeah, and yeah. Jesus went through all of it. So yeah. he, he cares for us. He yeah. has um, a sympathy to us. Yeah. us um, and he actually makes a way yeah. for us to escape all temptation yeah. as well. So yeah. we can trust that God is with us during these attacks, during these temptations. Yeah, yeah, I love it. The process of temptation is, is uh, you know, a thought comes into your mind. Sometimes that's our own sinful uh, desires, isn't it? Sometimes it's Satan trying to tempt us. Yeah. And that thought comes in and there's a moment where you, where, and that's not the sin, you know, it's being tempted, mm. isn't it? The, the, but there's a moment when we make a choice yeah. that actually this is, sounds like something good. And I think that's when we stray into sin, is when we make that choice to continue thinking about it and then do the thing. And I love that the scripture says that, as you said, no temptation has ceased us except what is common to man. God is faithful. He always provides a way out so we can stand up under it. Amen. God always provides a way. Yes. And, and, and I found that there's always something the Lord gives to break that, to give us that chance to break the chain of thought from it turning from a temptation to you know, mm. actually really dwelling on it. It can be a sneeze, a dog bark, you know, I mean, just, <laughs> God is so good. There is yeah. just, he gives us that moment where we think, whoa, what am I thinking that for? Yeah. No, that's wrong, I'm not gonna do that. And uh, yeah, so these are the schemes, aren't they? He lies, he accuses, he counterfeits, he tempts us. Uh, Yes. Yeah, and we and, need to avoid them. Yeah, and do you know what? We are encouraged in scripture that he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. Yeah. And we need exactly. to hold on to, to that reality. And no matter what you're going through, God is with you. He makes a way out of um, temptation. And um, you can overcome all the enemy schemes and you can label them as what they are because you have the truth of scripture to highlight them for you.